So, Infinity Pool. Here is my first review of a film that came out in 2023. This is starring Mia Goth and Alexander Skarsgård. Was this my cup of tea? Not really, <laughs> unfortunately. This is a uh, very Brandon, Brandon Cronenberg-esque film, however, so if you're into that style, definitely go check it out. I did watch Possessor, and I did do it for a 31 Days of Horror, and um, overall, I think Possessor was more my speed. I definitely can say that I enjoyed that film more than this one. Um, but they're both very Brandon Cronenberg, so if you know what you're getting into by that alone, then you know if this film is going to be for you or not. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this spoiler free because it is a relatively new film. And let me start off by saying, first of all, that um, the spoiler free reviews and... Uh, D descriptions that I got before watching this film <clears throat> basically uh, describe the first act. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the second and the third act that took me extremely by surprise and this film definitely uh, throws a lot of punches and throws a lot of um, <sighs> throws a lot more ideas and plays with the ideas a lot more in the second and third act. Um, very very basic uh, storyline. We have Mia Goth's character, Gabby, and uh, her husband, played by a guy named Alban. I forget the actor's name. But uh, they meet this couple that is, like, on a resort. They're, they're all on a resort uh, in this fictional, seemingly European country. Um, this couple is there, played by Alexander Skarsgård. His name is James, and he's an author, and he's there with his wife, M. I believe it's his wife, anyway. And the couples meet, and Mia Goth recognizes uh, James as an author and says that she's read his book, she loves his book dearly, she clearly wants his cock, like it's not even remotely subtle how much this girl is flirting with, uh, with James right in front of her husband, which kind of seems to suggest that they're kind of uh, polygamous, that's how it seems throughout the movie, but... Uh, anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, they meet up, and then basically this country that this resort is in is is extremely corrupt. And in this dimension or parallel world kind of thing, in this fictional uh, country, um, there's obviously, you know, rich and poor like everywhere else. And... <clears throat> They have the ability to clone people, and they have a law where they're very strict on their laws. So basically, if you commit a crime, you have two choices. You can be executed, or you can um, clone yourself so the clone can take the punishment for you. Um, that's the very, very basic platform gist of the film, and that's what I went into the film expecting and I thought that that story was going to be stretched out into the entire length of the film. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> it kind of sets up a story at the beginning of the movie but then it takes a whole fuckload of directions and um, there's a lot of, you know, P and V G, just like Possessor, you do see a lot of naked bodies in this film. Um, I've always loved Mia Goth. Mia Goth is sexy as hell and she only gets better looking each year that passes by, it seems. And um, she's great in this. Her performance is fantastic. Mia Goth is an actress that's very comfortable um, on camera and doing a lot of things. She's very comfortable with herself and she's very comfortable getting into any style of character you know, showing your body, stuff like that. She has no problem. <laughs> she like Even back to like Nymphomaniac, she's very much like that actress, I uh, forget her last name, but Charlotte something. She was in Nymphomaniac. She was in um, Dark Crimes with Jim Carrey. Uh, she was in the Independence Day sequel. Uh, she's been in a lot of things. She's another British actress. Um, like her, like that actress, Mia Goth is very similar and she's very comfortable in exposing herself and, and diving deep into characters and... and doing a lot that, you know, many other actors and actresses would be either too shy or too uncomfortable doing. Um, 
And yeah, so this, this film definitely branches off into some crazy directions. This is a film that I, I wasn't able to, but I wish I could watch with subtitles because a lot of the dialogue is very low. Um, and very like whispered kind of sometimes mumbled and a lot of the accents are really thick um, So there's a lot of points in the movie where I literally sometimes was lost and I don't know if that's to blame on the Convoluted part of the film because this film also is a much bigger mindfuck than I was expecting it to be but there's other scenes that I really had a hard time understanding what was going on. For example, there's a part of the movie where a bunch of characters decide to um, basically break into somebody's home. And I didn't know for what and what reason and what their plan was or motive was because they were talking about it right before that happened, but I didn't catch any of it. And, and I was just confused because... Um, I didn't understand the motives for what they were doing and then the scene plays out afterwards and I was kind of lost in a way there's uh, there's a lot like the ending is kind of I don't I don't know if it's left into interpretation because it, it like there's no there's nothing they don't show you but it kind of leaves you like huh like why that <laughs> it's a little crazy um, Again, going back to Miguel's performance because she's probably the best character and the best actress, actor, period, in this film. Um, she is gorgeous and flirty and just striking and stunning for the first half of the film. And then the second half of the film, she is the most ear-piercing, annoying, scratchy voice, nail on a chalkboard bitch that you cannot stand. She flips so fast, and it's her acting. It's not, or and her character. Yeah, her 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 character just flips, and she becomes from the most likable, pretty, you know perfect model of what you'd want for a girlfriend to the most annoying wanting to strangle <laughs> chick ever it's it's insane um like i said with uh with the brandon cronenberg style nude scenes there is like a lot of that i'm gonna avoid spoilers but uh prepare for a lot of you know sex and typical stuff in that fashion and um also prepare for a lot of, how should I say, female empowerment, I guess. Uh, there's a lot, especially towards the second half of the film, where Alexander Skarsgård's uh, character James starts to be um, treated like a bitch. <laughs> and Mia Goth's character, um, Gabby, totally takes the reins on the whole dynamic of everything. And uh, he he is overpowered in the sense where there's Mia Goth plus like three other people, guys. And uh, he is definitely outnumbered. So in a lot of situations, it is hard for him to uh, fight back or escape because he he's he's outnumbered by you know let's just say people who are unstable, <laughs> and um, he's left in some scary situations but um yeah the, the the biggest thing i'm trying to speak and and i keep catching myself like i want to keep the spoilers behind <laughs> i start saying something and i'm like i don't want to go too far in that because it's going to spoil some stuff but uh um basically mostly just prepare for a very big mind fuck of a film um and it's uh it's it's warped like it it, it confuses you a lot um, it, it definitely takes the, the cloning theme and plays with it, and plays with it very, very well. Um, this And I love a mindfuck of a movie. This one just didn't hit the target for me as, as much as others did. I, I can't sit here and say it's a bad movie. I can say, though, that I've certainly seen, like, ten movies that I could probably list if I thought about it that I love way more than this one, that are mindfucks. There's films that I prefer. There's lots of films that I prefer over this one. Possessor's one by, by Brandon Cronenberg. Um, 
But yeah, like uh, Time Crimes is another one. Uh, it's a South American film. I think it's Argentinian, if I'm not mistaken. It could be Chilean, though. But Time Crimes uh, it has to do with time travel. Definitely a mindfuck of a movie that you should check out if we're speaking mindfuck specifically. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to list 10 films because I'd have to think about it for a while. Uh, go watch Infinity Pool if it's up your alley. Go watch it for Mia Goth alone or if you're into men and like Alexander uh, Skarsgård and his looks. He is a very handsome gentleman. Go watch for him too because <laughs> his performance is really, really well and he's just a great actor in general. And um, yeah, it's uh, it starts off with a simple build up and then it just escalates into some really really um crazy ideas so that's really all i got i'm going a little bit too long on this one uh yeah. subscribe to morgan film fan if you like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews i'll be back with more soon so stay tuned on the stay tuned for what's coming uh check out what's on the channel already and until next review have a good one take care and cheers